Hey guys, it's Matt. Welcome to Speed Tutor, and today I'm going to show you how to create a cool little animated health system where the health number ticks down over time and decreases smoothly, and we have a little animation on the heart too. And remember, this will all be on my Patreon for you to get access to with all the scripts and the full project, and be sure to check all the links down in the description for all the best sales, savings, and everything you can find in game dev. So first of all, I've got something called the health canvas, and to do that, I've just right-clicked, gone UI, and chosen a canvas. And that's my health canvas, and I made sure that it scales with screen size, and it's 1920 by 1080, so no matter where we position stuff, it will look correct in all resolutions. And then on that, I just have a basic background, which is a color. We need to add some text. So we'll go UI and choose text for Text Mesh Pro, and I'm just gonna call this our health text. With that being said, I'm gonna pull the bounding box out and I'm just gonna scale it all the way up. I'm gonna just put the text as 100. I'm gonna change the font and I'm gonna change it to one that I'd already created with Text Mesh Pro's font creator. And I do have a tutorial about this. I'll center and center it and I'll set the size to roughly around there. Then I want to right click the canvas again, choose UI, choose image, and I'm just going to call this our heart icon. In that image box, I'm going to search for heart because I've already got this icon. Remember, you can get all of these on my Patreon. I'm gonna scale this up. It's going to be 200 by 200, and then I'm gonna drag it up and just put it in line, in the center line with my 100. And I'm just gonna right click in my project panel, choose C sharp, and call this health controller. I'm going to create an empty game object in my hierarchy and call this health controller. And now with the health controller selected, I'm just going to add my health controller script, open up in Visual Studio. Now I'm going to use a couple of namespaces. So it's using unityengine.ui and using TM Pro, which is for Text Mesh Pro and the Unity's default UI, one for the image and one for the Text Mesh Pro. I'm going to get rid of the starting methods. And first of all, because we're doing health, I'm just going to create a header for just so we can keep it nice and neat. So first of all, we're going to have something called max health. So we're going to have the serialized field private float max health, set that equal to 100. I'm going to then have a private variable float current health because that will be what the health is at any given time. And then we're going to set a value which is called smooth decrease duration, which will be how long it takes for our health to actually gradually smoothly tick down to the correct value. Then I'm going to have some UI parameters and then I'm going to have a serialized field private TMP underscore text. And this is just my health text because this is what we're going to need to update. And under here, we need a start method because we're just going to initialize that current health should equal to whatever max health is at the start. And then we're going to want a way just to update the health text when we actually come to need to do that. So with that said, we can have update, update health text. And then we can just say that our health text dot text will be equal to the current health dot to string. And in brackets, in quotes, we'll have a zero just to keep it as a whole number. In that case, we're just going to update the health because we'll use that later. Now we want a method to actually take damage or what's going to happen when we want to take damage. So we'll have public void so we can use it elsewhere. And we'll have this method called take damage. In brackets, we'll have float and pass through the damage that's going to be caused. We'll open that up and say that uh, we're going to have a coroutine to then decrease it smoothly. So I'll just write that we'll have a coroutine that we're just about to write. We're going to have a private IE numerator because we're going to write the coroutine to make this happen rather than doing it on an update or anything like that. We'll call this smooth decrease health. We'll set a flow and damage as a parameter because we're going to be able to pass that in. So now in our coroutine, we need to be able to calculate how much damage should be taken for every time that we update within what we're going to create. So we'll say that we need a flow damage per tick and set that equal to damage divided by the smooth decrease duration. Then we'll have flow elapsed time, set that equal to zero F. And then we'll say that while, so we'll create a while loop and then inside the brackets, we'll say that elapsed time, if it's ever less than the smooth decrease duration, then we should be taking down the health essential. Then we'll have another private flow, which is current damage. Set that equal to the damage per tick times by time dot delta time. Then we'll have our current health minus equal the current damage that we just worked out. Then we'll say that the elapsed time plus equals time dot 
delta time. Then under here, we'll say that we need to update the health text because we needed to call that when it's all been calculated. Then we might want to check if the health is ever zero. So we'll say that if current health is ever less than or equal to zero, then under here, we can say that our current health should be equal to zero. Then we can say that the player's death could happen in this case. Then we'll break at this point if it is true because we don't want to do the loop anymore. And then underneath the last curly bracket here, we'll just say yield return null because we want to give control back to Unity to finalize this. Then we want to run our coroutine by saying start coroutine specify the method we're going to use and then the damage which was the flow that we need to use. That's great for our health controller but we need a way for the player to take damage like in my example. We'll create a new C-sharp script and call this damage controller. Then we're going to need a flow for the damage that we're going to be able to do in our actual script here. Then we're going to have a variable for the health controller which was that previous script we've just created. And then I might want to do a trigger event like in my case with my 2D character to be able to make sure that we do damage. So we can just say void on trigger enter 2D. Then I'll say that if the collision that we'll have is going to collide with the player, we're going to want to decrease the health. So in our case, we can call the health controller that we've just referenced and choose that method, which was public of take damage and then do the damage to our player like we wanted. Now, if I go back into Unity, I'm just going to add my damage controller to my bomb and it needs the health controller script referencing. It's going to do 10 damage. I'll go to my health controller, make sure that max health is 10. Decrease timer is 0.5 and we need the health text that we want to use. So I'll add that in here. Now, if we test this out, you can see that when I go over my bomb, it does reduce the health exactly like we expected and you can increase or decrease the health duration. So if we put it three seconds, it would tick down or go down much slower. In my example, you might want it to have changed the color of things when we do damage. So we'll open up our health controller back up. And now I'm gonna make a reference to my heart icon. So I'll have private image heart icon because I want to change that color too. I'm going to create two variables for the original health color and the damage health color. So what we're gonna change the color of the text and the actual icon of the item itself. Then we can say at the top of the coroutine health text dot color is equal to the damage health color. And also the heart icon dot color is also equal to the damage health color. We'll copy these two lines that we've just created and underneath the curly bracket here, which was after our while statement, we can so they say that instead of it being the health damage color, we can just have this as the original health color once it's all finished. Now, if we go back into Unity and look at the original health color, we'll set it to white and increase the alpha all the way to the top. And the damage color could be red and make sure you set the alpha all the way to the top or it would be just completely transparent. And then make sure to add the heart icon to the health controller. We'll test again and you can see that it's red when it ticks down exactly like we expected it to do then one last thing we might want to do is do the other little animation on the heart icon. So I'm going to select on my heart icon. I'm just going to go to window animation and I'm going to add, bring out the animation tab like you can see here. I'm going to create a new animation. I'm going to call this heart pulse. Now I'm going to make sure that I click record. Then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly scale down my width to 150 and then scale it back up to 200 just so that it creates a basic keyframe at the beginning. Now I'm gonna go probably about 15th of a second and what I'm going to do is I'll decrease the size to 150, 150 and then I'm just gonna grab the initial keyframes and move not very far along and paste those in there so you can see that my animation will look something like that. Again, you can drag keyframes along, pull it close together depending what sort of style of animation so you can get it more looking like this. Now what you can do is you can open up the heart icon and you can see that heart pulse is the default animation state in the actual state machine. Now we don't really want that. We just want to create right click, create state and just choose empty. And I'm just gonna set that as the default layer just because that's the thing that's gonna start. We want to only access and start playing this pulse when we want to. Also, this is a good way to increase the speed of the heart pulse by just creating, increasing the speed there. Now make sure that you select the heart pulse in the project and make sure that you take off 
loop time just so that it doesn't loop over and over because we only want to specify when we want to do it. So we'll open up damage controller again. Now at the top of the script, we want to create some fields for understanding animations. So that I'm just going to have a private animator. So for the heart animation and then the string or the name of the heart shrink animation that we're going to specify in the editor. So then in our take damage method, when we should take the damage and de start decreasing the health, we can just say that the heart anim dot play and then open up the brackets. We'll say that the heart shrink animation, then we'll set that as the layer of zero and it has no delay. So that's also 0, 0.0 F to play the animation from the animator. Now, if we go back to the inspector for the health controller, make sure that we add the heart icon into the slot to get hold of the animator. Next, we want to give the name of the heart animation. So we'll just call this heart pulse. So you can see them both there. Now, if we test this out, you can see that we have the pulse changing the color and the health going down as we absolutely take damage. And of course, if you could do this the same way, if you wanted to increase health, you could change it to green and do things like that. So then in my case, I just started adding other little effects that when I take damage across the bomb, you get a particle effect and you could always get rid of the bomb every time you collide with it as another example. But this is just a nice, sweet way to do it, to control the health, decrease it, do an animation. And remember, you can get hold of it on my Patreon to use it anytime. And do check out all the links in the description for all the best sales, savings, and everything you can find in game dev. Be sure to check out all my great assets out on the Unity Asset Store and massive savings on my website. And a big thank you to all my patrons. And a massive thank you to Peter Steiner and everybody else who comes to watch the video and support everything I do. So thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Cheers.